Supreme Court. His own nominees ruled against him. Why shouldn't the American public at this point believe that the president has something he's trying to hide? Uh, first, let me note something. Uh, the taxes are under audit. He said he, released, he would release them when they are no longer under audit. Uh, the justices Obviously, did not. The justices did not rule against him. In fact, it was a unanimous opinion uh, saying that this needs to go back to the district court. And they even recognize that the president has an ample arsenal of arguments uh, that he can make. And in fact, I would show that the Vance majority laid out a roadmap for the president. The Vance majority said the president has the right to challenge the subpoena on any ground permitted by state law, be it bad faith or undue burden or breadth. They went on to say the president can raise subpoena-specific constitutional challenges, uh, and they specifically mention a violation of the supremacy clause as one thing that he can raise. So they essentially laid out a roadmap. Uh, this, his justices did not rule against So to be clear, okay, fine. I don't dispute anything that you just said. What I'm asking, though, is the president, whatever the court says, the president can release his taxes whenever he likes. So why shouldn't Americans at this point believe that the president isn't trying to hide something? In it? You know, the media has been asking this question for four years, and for four years the president has said the same thing. His taxes are under audit, um, and when they're no longer under audit, he will release them. But I would also note the excruciating ruling for House Democrats who were very much called out for their partisan games. Uh, they also subpoenaed the president's uh, information, financial information, and Justice Roberts said, far from accounting for separation of powers concerns, the House's approach aggravates them by leaving essentially no limits on the congressional power to subpoena the president's personal records. So leave it to House Democrats who did a partisan impeachment, a political witch hunt against this president. And this was yet another part, only to be rebuked by the Supreme Court. Let me ask about coronavirus. Just my, just my follow-up, if I may, on coronavirus quickly, Kaylee. Hospitalizations in the country are up 50 percent since mid-June. How can the president say that the country is in good shape right now? So I would know with hospitalizations um, in a lot of these hospitals, I, I spoke with Dr. Burks this morning about 10 to 40 percent in the hospital hospitals reaching high capacity are COVID, so a lot of hospitalizations aren't pertaining to COVID. Um, what I would also and note, and I'm glad... Hospitalizations is not because of COVID? Well, a lot of it is elective surgeries and other surgeries that have opened up. About 10 to 40 percent in the hospitals reaching capacity are COVID-related. Um, but I'm glad that you asked about COVID, because I do want to take a moment to highlight some of the things that the federal government has done. Can you answer uh, question first we're, of why we're in good shape right now with hospitalizations going up, in spite of what you said about elective surgeries? Well, one of the things I would note is the mortality rate, which has had, if you look at the weekend numbers, a tenfold decrease, you could argue an even greater decrease if you compare to some of our highest days. Uh, we're seeing the fatality rate in this country come down. Uh, that is a very good thing. We grieve when any one, even one life is lost, but I think uh, it's progress as we enter uh, the next phase of this. But are a lot of other people Thank seriously you, Kaylee. ill, Kaylee? Uh, so. Thank you, Kaylee. Uh, on the China, so the, the administration today rolled out some sanctions against high-level Chinese officials over what the Uyghur House Secretary Kelly McEnany isn't pulling any punches with the mob and the media. Take a look. Finally, I'd end with this. You know, I was asked probably 12 questions about the Confederate flag. Uh, this president's focused on action, and I'm a little dismayed that I didn't receive one question on the deaths that we got in this country this weekend. White House Press Secretary Kelly McEnany joins us. You know, it's such a good point. Um, we have hundreds of people shot every weekend. If anyone wants to have a debate about memorials or statues, I'm, all, I'm open for debate. Anybody. Can we do it while we're simultaneously protecting the life of every American citizen in every city and town in the country? Because our kids are now dying at six, seven, and eight from bullets in their head. Yeah, Sean, that's exactly right. I actually went back and counted on my way here. I was asked more than 24 questions about the Confederate flag, not one about these children. And good on you to show the pictures of these kids. We need to know their faces, know their names. Sequoria Turner, who lost her life in Atlanta. This is a tragedy. This is happening on America's streets because of Democrat mayors and Democrat governors. And there's fundamental uninterest in getting to the bottom of it by many in the press. It's despicable. And it just goes to show how out of touch people are right. here in the swamp and the president i think it was a great idea garden of heroes honoring everybody all races backgrounds that that are great americans so you have combined over 125 years experience if we were stupid enough as a country to elect biden pelosi and schumer well they didn't do opportunity zones uh they didn't do criminal justice reform they didn't do police reform uh historically black colleges and they didn't shatter record after record low unemployment for minorities in America. And they had eight years to do it. Why didn't they do it?
Words are one thing, symbolism is one thing, actions and success are another. That's exactly right. And what you listed off, President Trump did with action, making permanent HBCU funding, criminal justice reform, lowest black unemployment rate in history. But what do Democrats have to offer us? Failed experiments like CHOP, where two children died in an autonomous zone. Failed cities like Chicago, uh, where you saw 13 killed last week and 77 injured, like New York City, where you've had for three weeks a many-fold increase in shootings. This is what leftist policies have gotten us in the black community in particular poverty, crime in the cities, uh, and it's taken President Trump to rescue people from that scenario and give hope I've, and opportunity. I noticed the mob is criticizing you, New York Times and others, and I'm thinking, well, that means you're doing a great job. Does it bother you at all? I take it as a badge of honor, Sean. Uh, if they're criticizing me, guess what that means? I'm getting to them. I'm pushing their buttons. I'm not going to play their game that they like to play with any Republican who comes to this town. I'm speaking the truth. That's what I intend to do. And the truth is that this president has done so much for this country. They don't give him an ounce of credit, but we will give him credit from the White House podium. All right. You know what, Kaylee? Great job. And I know many people in America are cheering your beatdowns daily, and they deserve it and more. Thank you for being with us.